Howdy folks, Kirk and Jason here with Kirk Giordano Plastering. Today, I want to talk about lime. Um, this diamond lime plaster because a lot of people have called and asked and say, Kirk, what is, what does that mean when, like for example, this is USG diamond plaster. It's, uh, it says right here, veneer finish. That, that topic right here, veneer finish, throws a lot of people off because they say, what is veneer? What kind of mineral is that? Well, it's not a mineral, it's an application, meaning a thin coat. So when it says veneer finish, what it should really say is lime finish. Because you take the limestone, you put it in a huge kiln or furnace, you heat it up and you get lime, slack lime or slaked putty, either one. Then when you add water, like what we did here, you come up with this stuff right here. And this, the, the thing I'm going to answer today is... Can you just go one coat? Technically, when we put this product on here, and, and by the way, in the UK, they call it skim plaster. That's a better terminology because all I'm going to do is skim this. This is an old house, about 100 year old. And what they had here was old wood lath. So the wood lath, he just put uh, sheetrock over that. He didn't have to. We could have skim coated right over the wood lath after we prepped it. What is that pink stuff there? That pink stuff is plaster weld. That's made by Larson's. Do you actually need the pink stuff? No. You can get Quick Crete uh, sold at Home Depot. Uh, this right here, you got to go all the way to the plastering yards to get it. So if you want to use that, you got to Google plastering yards near me. Anyway, this particular plaster, it's limestone. So it's uh, lime putty. And what we're going to do is we're going to put a coat on that you can't really see it if you're facing it, but it's about a half inch thick. So I'm going to show you guys and explain something what people ask me often. They say, hey, Kirk, how come we need to put a base coat under it? And I say, you don't really have to unless you know the rules. The rules are, if you're going to apply it over sheetrock or any other substrate, clean that substrate, meaning get all the dust, dirt, grime off it because this will not adhere. So, now here's what I'm going to do, guys. A lot of times people will say, how can you use such a big trowel? Well, the big trowel gets it true and plumb with almost one swipe. There it is. There it is. If you're working with a little bitty trowel, then you'll be doing this all day and you'll have to rod this section because it's hard to figure out how to make it true and plumb. See, that's where it's true and plumb. From this, this piece of sheetrock to that piece of sheetrock. And one of the things I guess I'll point out right now is people say, well, how come you can't just put one coat of veneer? You can. I'm doing it right now. And the reason uh, I'm doing it is to prove a point, guys. If you put, say, for example, a base coat of Structolite, now, when that Structolite sets, and keep in mind, Structolite takes uh, about three to five hours to set, but when you go over Structolite that's already set, that, that Structolite will give you a hard, dense surface, meaning this will absorb right into it. Right now, as it, as it goes, this Diamond usually takes about, diamond or imperial, they take about, say, when, once that bag is mixed, it takes about a half hour for this stuff to set. Unless you're going over Structolite that's already hard, then it'll suck the moisture right out. So you've got about 10 minutes. So I know how much time I have. And so to prove a point, as far as these holes right here, the idea, if you read the bags, it'll say this material is allowed to go. 3 sixteenths of an inch thick. Can you go an inch or two? Yeah, I've done it thousands of times. Say like I'll be doing a house and I'll be finishing it and I'll see a bunch of holes. Maybe, oh, I'd say anywhere between an inch to two inches deep. And what I'll do is I'll just fill it with this. Now granted, when this sets, it sets, like say for example, in the bucket right there, it's gonna be a half hour. So as soon as I took my first hawk full out of here, I got a half hour to use it. 
meaning apply it, and then it's going to get hard. And when it gets hard, I'm going to bring it back to life and get some of the holidays out of it and make sure it's kind of true and plumb here and there. And can you match a scripture I'll finish like that? Absolutely. Sure you can. But the reason I'm doing this right here is because when you try to do one coat, you just have to know when to play with it. When to leave it alone and when to play with it. And most people, if they do one coat, what it'll do is it'll they'll over trial it. Once it starts to set, then they'll start trialing it. And that'll if one coat, it'll separate from this or to create blistering, spider checking, cracking, things like that. So once I get into this, because we got a lot of stuff we're doing here. Once I get this on, we're going to go do some other stuff. And then when this sets in about another, say, oh, less than 20 minutes, I'm going to come right back to it. Okay, guys, we are multitasking today. We've got a whole bunch of rooms we're doing, so I wasn't sure if it was a good idea to show what I'm referring to because the question is, people call me and they say, can I do one coat over sheetrock? And my response is, I don't know if you can, but I can. And here's why, guys. Okay, now this is just, it's limestone, lime plaster. It's over the sheetrock. And the idea is the sheetrock... Um, well, the plaster weld, the emulsifiers have got to set, and then the plaster sets, and now that substrate becomes one, it becomes solid. If you do that, and right now I can look at this, plus we have a big pile outside like this of excess, and I stuck my finger in it, and it's starting to get hard. So the idea is, this is starting to get hard because the bucket is, oh, there's a holiday right there. You put st struck the light in a few areas and we don't want to drag that anyway now that this is set here's a number of ways you can do this guys because you don't want to disturb it you want to keep a wet trowel and if this gets set all the way where it's gone here's something you can buy it's called a spray bottle and you just uh, pump it up and spray it and it brings it back to life I prefer to just use a wet trowel like like so unless we're doing whole complete rooms and here's how you do this now we want we don't want spider checking we don't want separation we don't want hairline cracking or blistering so it'll it'll have a bunch of bubbles here if i keep playing with it so okay here's what you do now that now that it's starting to set you take your trowel wet it or wet the wall either way works wet it and come up you see that's already getting hard and it might take some pressure. You might have to put some force on it, like say, that's the equivalent of lifting maybe a 10 pound dumbbell. And you just push hard now, but don't over trial it. Uh, let's see, there it is. That's done, guys. Now let's see the bottom here. That's done. I'm gonna wet this a little bit to bring it back to life. That's done, but that's really smooth, and this is not so smooth. So what I want to do is I don't want it too pretty because we don't want to have one pretty perfect spot and the rest not so. So I'm going to put a little skip right here. And that's just to make it so it's not completely uniform or it won't match this. The same applies up here. Come on now, ladder. All right, so the same applies here. Push hard. And it all depends. You see that excess here, watch. That's a little bit of excess there. And it's setting right now. So I'm being careful not to over trowel it. There's about six to seven swipes. That matches, that matches this. Now I'm gonna just put some imperfection. I'm gonna take the mud that's on the trowel right now, come down. That's what happens when you put struct of light and it's got a little bit of sand here and there. Okay, now that's not going to separate. It's not going to blister. Now, okay, we go up here. Another thing, guys. Uh, now, granted, we got four rooms we're doing right now. And in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, man, what are those other rooms doing? So we're multitasking, doing a lot of stuff. 
if you're going to use this, guys, now this is a skip trial finish. And he put fiberglass tape around here. If you put fiber mesh tape around a perimeter, I mean, that's okay for sheetrock, but for plaster, the plaster weld is better. It bonds the new to the existing. Whereas if you put the fiber mesh tape, now I've got to uh, cover that. So that'll take a little bit extra know-how, which is not a big deal. And what I want to do here is bring the texture out. Okay, that's done as far as application. As far as uh, troweling, so we don't get the blistering effect or the separation. Now that's done. Now I've just got to put a skip trowel texture to match this here. And that part is not so bad. Okay, we're gonna, I'm going to grab some excess plaster and show you that last piece. All right, guys, I'll show you another indication how you know it's ready to trial on. And right now, I'm just taking this little throwaway brush and getting my corner, uh, dropping it down. Here's how you know when it's dry. It darkens, so you can see that's kind of dark. So what I'm doing now is I'm just, I'm just putting on a skip trial finish. And if the camera shows it, you can, you can see the difference in color. But with us, I mean, I've got to match the finish. So this is the skip trial. It's like, let's see if you can see down here. See that difference of color? That's when you know it's starting to set, and that's when you start to hit it. That's to match this finish here. And where the tape is, I've got to put it a little heavy because we want to cover that ridge. So when you guys are using plaster, you really don't need uh, tape unless it's going over sheetrock joints. Then you put the fiber mesh tape. But as a rule, you don't do that. So all I'm doing now is finishing the skip trial finish. Then we've got to get back to all the other details we got going on here. Anyway, guys, my name is Kirk. Jason on the camera. We thank you guys for watching and as usual, we'll see you guys on the next one. All right, folks, we've reached the end of another video. As always, we thank you for watching. If you enjoy what we're putting out for you guys, please like and subscribe to keep supporting us. And as usual, from the entire Giordano family, we'll, we'll see, see you on the next one. one.